video is sponsored by IGUS, thanks to IGUS. Uh, you're gonna watch a video about an FX market preview for next week, and we recorded it with the, the Mac here, and it just kind of struggled to get all of it right. For some reason, the, the computer just kind of got tired and sad, and so you can hear the microphone popping and crackling a bit, but the content's really good, and I don't wanna redo it because I think I got it right the first time, and I said a lot of things that I don't think I would remember to say the next time. So before we start, if you could just bear with me on this video today, you could skip it if you don't like the audio. We take that kind of stuff really seriously around here and we wanna get it right every time. But if you're gonna watch the video, just be aware, if you can bear with me for just a few minutes in that video, there's some popping and crackling and the, and the video's a little bit shaky a couple of times. Appreciate your patience. You can leave me a comment below if you wanna look at a different currency pair inside of the next video. And we'll see you soon, soon everybody. Bye for now. I'm looking at the week ahead, the week of, let's say, June 15th. So a couple days early here, we'll look at the longer term charts. I think there's some interesting things coming up. There's the CPI out of, that looks like the German flag, and then the zoo, that always moves the market a bit. Uh, retail sales, I don't really care about that. Inflation, I don't really care about that. Housing starts, I really don't care about that. Building permits, I don't care about that. So the UK employment, or the Australia employment, that's what that is, that's important, right? Is that the Australia import? Whatever. Um, you know what? There aren't really any, the jobless claims as usual are important, but I'm not seeing anything on the calendar here that I would really get so excited about that I would think, oh, wow, we, we've got to just zero in all of our attention on that one report. And in the absence of that, you really are left with that ZEW, the Zoo Economic Conditions Report out of Germany. It's kind of a bellwether because German manufacturing and German, the German economy is such a substantial portion of the European economy. And it's basically the, the shining light, the city on a hill of the European economic story. And that's why today my focus is on the Euro and it's, it's gone right to the top of that range that we talked about weeks ago. I mean, we're all the way at the top of that range and we're banging up against that 1.14, that $1.14 level. And now what that puts into play is this, I think what you naturally get at a time like this is you then naturally have to take a rest. Okay, so I'm putting 75 uh, trend lines on my screen here, but you can see now that's the trend line that matters. If we break below this trend line and we're looking at a reasonably longer term scenario here, right? So we're on the four hour chart. This is a reason it takes longer period of time for everything to play out on this chart. I think what you want to look for is if you want to, you want to look for a break below that level that trend line here that terminates probably at you know a dollar thirteen or so, and if we break that level, blow through that level, rise back up to touch that level again, then come down. That puts into play the uh, you know one eleven eighty or a dollar twelve one dot twelve. That's the area that you want to look at next. And remember, there, there's a there's a second side to every one of these stories and all trading involves a substantial risk of loss and past performance is no guarantee of future results, right? And listen, most people lose money trading because they don't have a plan and then a backup plan. So that's the scenario that I think is most likely to play out. I think the, the most likely, 51% more most likely is a drop from these levels. However, what happens if we break through the highs at 1425? What happens then? How far can we go from that level? And there's an easy answer to that question. And what we want to do is just put a horizontal line at that previous high. We want to put a horizontal line at that previous high at 1495 or just the round number $1.15 or 115. That's the next level of resistance. But these markets, they don't just reach those highs, they break through them. And if the euro is going to do that, if the dollar is going to get hammered and the euro is going to get stronger, you need that zoo report to come in much stronger than anticipated. It needs to beat the expectations by 10% or more even. And when you get that kind of a situation, you get an economic number that gets released and it beats expectations by 10%. That's when you get a news report that moves the market for longer than just 15 minutes. It can move it for days. It can even set the tone for months, in fact. 
That's why I'm going to have my eye on that report. And if we can stay above a dollar fourteen twenty-five, and we can stay above that level for a few hours even after the report, and then we come back down to that level and rest on that level, and then it takes off from there, then it's not just one fifteen that's in play. It's like one sixteen, one seventeen. You probably have to start then planning for a scenario where a dollar twenties in in your sights. And the reason I say all of that is that I'm planning possible trades to sell off the euro. I'm planning those trades. I'm probably going to take those trades. I may even initiate a position around these levels right now. But if it breaks above $14.25, $14.25, then I'm out. Then I'm out. I got to stop out of the position above that level. And then I got to ride it up to those levels that we talked about, $1.15, $1.16, maybe all the way up and ride that trend much higher. And frankly, the trend is up. So any, any jerk like me that's planning to sell this looks like a complete idiot because I'm selling off. But if you look at the chart again, and remember past performance is no guarantee of future results, we do appear to be kind of rolling over here. And what we could do here is this could be the head of a head and shoulders pattern. This could be the, the, the shoulder over here, and then we could be forming the head in the middle right now, drop back, rise back up and do the right shoulder, and then just blow through everything lower. And if we do that, then we're looking at a much more substantial drop off to 1.11 or what I would think is more likely 1.10 because that's just such a great round number. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just put the call out there. I think it's 51% likely or more likely, in my opinion, that we're going to see that number, but it's going to require some bad economic numbers out of Europe next week. And we'll keep an eye on that. Once again, thank you to IGUS for sponsoring this video. We appreciate you. And you can check the link out below if you'd like. I'm Rob Booker, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.